Hello, folks. Richard Moore, USA, GSA. I want to talk with you briefly about a story I did on uh, the 17th of August. And it involves the sheriff of Clay County, Mississippi. I did this story on the uh, hills of a, another uh, story in Knoxville County where the sheriff there, Grassery, had been accused of sexually assaulting and raping multiple female inmates under his care. And uh, Grassery uh, uh, did step down after a long stint as sheriff of Knoxby County. The prosecutor for uh, that area in the 6th Judicial District, Scott Cologne, uh, was positioning himself as if uh, he couldn't do much with it. He referred it to the FBI. And I'm going to leave it right there a second, and then we're going to go to Clay County because we do have some few developments on more corruption and all these other things. And um, it, and I, I, if, if I don't bring it to you folks, you're just not going to get it. You're not going to get the rest of the story. But before I jump into it, I'd like to remind you that it's important that you subscribe to our channel and share our content and share it relentlessly. We're inundated by fake media and the fake news that have a very narrow narrative and it's a one-sided, there's little or no investigative journalism and whatever story is given to them by law enforcement is the story they run with and and that no questions asked, no investigations. They don't want to talk to the family. They don't want to talk to witnesses. They get their story from, from the spokesperson, from the police department, the sheriff's department, and that's a wrap. So we uh, give you the other side and we give you the unadulterated truth as it comes in. Not gonna pull any punches. In the description of this video, you'll find our link tree if you click that link tree, that will give you the links to our other platforms, our blogs, and so forth, where you can follow us. Also, our Patreon. If you like what we're doing here at USA GSA and want to support what we're doing here and, and get be in on the know and to get information before anybody else gets it and get information that is not available on the other platforms, I encourage you to become a Patreon. And you can do that for as little as $5 a month, folks. And uh, to get the truth, I, I, I'd have to believe it's at least worth that. There's also other avenues in there in which you can support us. We're 100% supported by our listeners and followers. And we've got some faithful supporters out there. And um, I always feel like I don't thank them enough, but I want to let you know, I appreciate you. You know who you are. And because of you, we're doing what we're doing. And we're continuing to grow and we're continuing to reach people and help people and be the voice for those that feel like they have no voice or have no voice and be the voice for victims across this country. So going back to uh, Knoxville County, uh, the the uh, the district attorney, the chief prosecutor handed it off to the FBI and, uh, and the FBI investigated. They did whatever they did and Grassery got a day in jail and uh, three or five years house arrest or something like that. As for multiple rapes and sexual assaults, as people in the penitentiary do it by near life sentences for that, he gets a day. Scott Cologne couldn't do much with it. Uh, now, then the news uh, uh, last week, I believe it was, or week before last, did a story on Grassley and about that maybe the state was going to try to come back in there and do something and who they have up there questioning and talking about it Scott Cologne and Scott Cologne was sticking the feather in his hat acting like he had taken the charge on this thing and prosecuted Grassley and got him out all that didn't do anything I couldn't believe it I couldn't believe they was even talking to him he gave his they should have been talking to the FBI 
And so, but let's say he did all that in the New York Times and and the, and the media, and of course, and everybody got it wrong. And and Scott Cologne single handedly got Grassery a day in federal prison, which that's impossible. I want to know why Scott Cologne, because Clay County is his as well. We've got Eddie Scott, the sheriff in Clay County, that has at least five documented cases of rape and sexual assault of female inmates under his care in Clay County, in the Clay County Jail. Now, the FBI investigated him like they did Grassery, and nothing came of it. I mean, they questioned the staff. They didn't know anything. It, everybody is singing the same tune. The only people that's not singing the same tune, of course, are the victims. And somehow the victims have just viciously made this up. And and there we go. They're liars. And they've criminalized the victim once again. And people I look and say, well, you know, they should have been acting uh, uh, fresh. Or they should have been wearing a short skirt. They wouldn't have got raped. They asked for it. That's what they get or whatever. And I just find it unconscionable that anybody could have that mindset when it comes to the safety and welfare of the citizens. And we've got someone in position of trust, like the sheriff, the chief law enforcement officer of Clay County, is manipulating and raping and molesting and assaulting females under his care, taking them out of the jail, taking them to a flop house. Now, all that is on the, the interview I did with uh, uh, with uh, Amber, uh, with uh, I didn't do it with Amber. I did it about Amber, but I talk about that house and her uh, sexual assault and what have you. New York Times covered that story, and they covered the story of the other women uh, that had uh, the same uh, implications about Eddie Scott. And he skated, ladies and gentlemen. He skated Scott free. And, and still sitting in office, still got a badge, still driving the tax pay, still getting, still getting uh, his benefits, all that stuff. And those deputies, those deputies that are working for him, and those people that are complacent with the crimes of this sheriff, you're just as culpable as he is. You took an oath just like he did. When you see someone else breaking the law, it doesn't matter if they've got a badge. I don't care about this blue wall of silence where we look after each other and we don't say anything. Somebody's got to say something. Where does this end? So also on this uh, this uh, story I did on Amber Jones, I brought it to the public's attention. It, Eddie Scott was already aware of it. But I broke the story on August the 17th. Now, September the 2nd, Monday, two weeks. He waited two weeks. I broke the story, put the picture up there about Eddie Scott's gambling casino right there on the main street up in west point go back and look at the video I circle aerial photograph where it was the name of it who was running it what they were doing etc now two weeks later they make a bust on this place that we put on blast here on this channel usa gsa on the amber jones story now according to fake news this is what the sheriff told them that they acted on a tip. Somebody called them in two days prior to that, two days, and they went in there and busted and they arrested these two uh, Middle Eastern, uh, appear to be Middle Eastern. I said I thought his name was Omar, but it was Ahmad. I was close. And uh, But here's the thing we do know that there's a, a gang member running it. He wasn't arrested. He's not from the Middle East, he's from uh, 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 Middle Caledonia, maybe but not from the Middle East. And and next, the sheriff was giving them protection, and that's the reason they could run this deal in broad daylight, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, without being any in, impeding at all. But when the cat got out of the bag, Eddie Scott took two weeks to get his uh, self out of that jam and get whoever else out, get the toothpaste back in the tube. And the two guys from the Middle East that thought they had the best deal since sliced bread are in jail. Imagine that. And, folks, that's the way it is. For these confidential informants and snitches and stuff working out here for law enforcement, and you think 
you've got a gold card and a get out of jail free card. You can do what you want to, when you want to, how you want to. The first wind of change and adversary that that comes, you can believe one thing. You're gone. You'll go to the penitentiary. And I, I, I don't how many people, snitches that I know that thought they had it like that. They was getting dope for free, getting to commit crimes and doing all these things. Then all of a sudden, they got off the reservation or they got tired of them. They, they served their purpose and they're doing mandatory time in prison. A lot of time. Amy O'Callaghan's one of them, case in point. She was a, one of their gold star rats. And there you go. And I'm not going to mention her yet because I don't want to ruin it, but they got another one and fixing it, crucify another one the same way. That's the way they do it. Now, so. I want everybody to remember where they got that information. And too many times, these people that we expose want to discredit and kill the messenger. I, he don't know what he's talking about. He's just running, he's just loud mouth running his head and all that. Well, I, I, I've been wrong occasionally, but I can tell you one thing. I don't make it a habit of being wrong. I do not make it a habit to get on here and report something that is absolutely faults i don't do that i get it the hard way i earn it i beat the streets i talk to people all day long from sun up to sundown there's a lot of work goes in to gathering information to bring that stuff to the people oh, simply to have those that are on the bandwagon for these corrupt criminals with badges to try to discredit the the, the victims and the messengers just like Amber Jones still lives in, in Clay County. And I'm going to get Amber on here and let her tell her story instead of just me telling it. But it, as New York Times reported this as well, each one of these women that complained about the sexual assault and rape, all of them were retaliated against by the sheriff, including Amber Jones. They planted dope in her house, CPS, they ran in there and swatted her. Took her child. She hadn't seen her child in over a year. Every bit of it bogus. Who, who is she going to go to? Was she going to get an attorney, a local attorney, to go against City Hall? No. Even if she had the money? No. It's not going to happen. They know it. So they simply take advantage of their power, and it's abuse of power, and it's unconscionable. This is what we have to push back against, folks, and continue to expose. And the people in Clay County need to stand up and do something about it. Now, the sheriff is taking credit for busting the casino in broad daylight. Uh, right there, I mean, you can throw a rock from the, the, from the jailhouse and hit the place. I already told you what the play was on that deal. But he, just like he did with the rapes and the assaults, he pulled himself away from it. And you would think that he could focus his all that energy instead of tomcatting and gambling and, and, and being in the dope business that maybe just maybe he could focus on getting that jail up to standard where it's fit for a human being to be in it. I'm going to put some pictures up here and let you see what it looks like inside of that jail. This asbestos, black mold, rust, and dank, wet, water, crappy, garbage dump of a jail that the taxpayers spend millions of dollars a year to support this deal. I, what they're doing with the money. Don't know what they're doing. I'm surprised they had done like uh, uh, Lowndes County just had a, a, a fire over there. Tried to burn that into the ground. Of course, an inmate did that. I don't know how these inmates are getting cigarette lighters and matches in the jail. No more than I know how they're getting fentanyl in there and they're overdosing on it. I guess, and, and phones, I get, they're crawling out the windows at night and going to the dope house or going to Walmart and getting this stuff and catching the jails on fire and overdosing. Now, folks, I don't know how many people buy that crap. I don't buy it. But for those that don't know, their, their modus operandi is when they get through uh, violating them on the side of the road or wherever they get them, throwing them to the ground and uh, 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 trying to break their neck and everything else or shooting them, uh, they grope them and, and they, they're violated right then. Hands everywhere where hands don't need to be. 
then when they get them to jail, they got to get a butt naked and then do the parade and, and all this stuff. Zero dignity. They can't wait to get them in there. They don't want the name. They don't, nothing. Get them clothes off. That's the first thing. Now, we ought to be concerned about that because these people is raping these people. And I, and I, am I the only one that's putting a uh, connection to dots here? I mean, really. And so they're focusing on that when they ought to be focusing on uh, giving protective uh, safety wear and stuff like that for people to be in that nasty place. Just because someone's arrested, folks, our Constitution and due process says that you're innocent until proven guilty. You're presumed innocent until proven guilty. Now, we know in this day and age, especially in the dirty South, that you're guilty until you can prove that you're innocent. Therefore, you go in that jail, they mistreat you, talk to you any kind of way, won't let you use the phone, make it impossible. You get a bondsman, they're on the take with the sheriff's department. I've got a story on that coming. That they, they're in the, in the gamut, too. And, and then you, you, you got the judges and lawyers and all this crap and somebody be arrested on a fake charge or something that's a, a violation of the Constitution, and they said, well, they dismiss it. Nobody, they don't get their money back. They don't get compensated for the trauma and, and all this stuff they went through of going through this nasty jail, of the groping and getting naked and all that crap. And it's over and over. And so they have judicial and qualified immunity that lets them do this without any checks and balances. Zero oversight over these sheriffs, ladies and gentlemen. And Lynn Fitch, the Attorney General of the State of Mississippi, if you're waiting on her office to do something, and she's over the MBI and, and all that stuff, then don't hold your breath, because absolutely, she is the one that's what they uh, uh, charged a cop for killing an unarmed 14 year old boy. She's the one that demanded and made sure that the charges were dropped and that they wasn't going to charge it. So she. It's not. If you're waiting on her to do something, it's her job. If you're waiting on her to do it, you're going to be waiting a long time. And maybe you can pay attention to that book, The Mississippi Swindle, and how she's involved in other people and are swindling millions from the state of Mississippi. We've got criminals, the highest order in this state, folks. And it's not a proud day. It doesn't make me proud to talk about it, but I can tell you what. There's plenty of good people that can do the job. But I'm going to tell you what, folks, we wonder why we don't have better people in here. The sheriff, it's, they're honest. They're going to they're going to abide by the law and it's going to apply to everybody the same way. Doesn't matter what color they are, what side of the tracks they're from. Lady Justice is supposed to be blind, but we know it doesn't matter. If you've got the right last name, you've got the right money. You may never see a jail. But if you don't and you got the wrong last name, you may rot in the penitentiary. That is not justice folks that is not the american way and this is what's happening now maybe it didn't happen to you but if it's happening you should be appalled if you're not appalled then something's wrong with you something very very wrong is wrong with you if that does not cause you to push back and say look they're treat you're not treating them equal get somebody in there that will do it most people that have a moral compass that have the capability of being the sheriff of being good in law enforcement. The reason they don't get in it is they do not want to lose their religion, their salvation and everything, and every, everything that they they've lived for and that they believe in because that's what they're going to have to do. Or they feel like they're going to have to do it in order to stay in there and play the game. That's a shame folks. So, uh, I want to keep you, uh, I wanted to bring that up to date, uh, bring y'all up to date on this. Uh, it, this is uh, impromptu. I hadn't planned on it, but uh, I didn't want to wait. And uh, I was going to do uh, a, a little bit. You know, they found a body, uh, uh, I believe it was Tuesday, over in uh, uh, by the, uh, the lake or the river in uh, Lowndes County. Burned out. It was a passenger in there. I'm going to assume that it was a a woman. It, it, well, I don't know who it is or, or what it was. But uh, So it, I've got pictures of this black rollback uh, wrecker taking the car, and they're hauling down the highway, 
the car's not covered. The body was cremated in the car. Now, I think, being that's crime scene, there's a body in they are, should have wrapped that in something. You know what I mean? But, nope, it's scattered ashes all over Lowndes County, whoever it is. Uh, no respect for, no respect. I don't have their, uh, securing the crime scene if it's, they've left a trail all the way to wherever they towed the car. My question is, if that tow truck fits the description of a tow truck, the only difference was it said Lowndes County on the side of it. And I'm told that they have magnets. Uh, that to put on there. Uh, maybe they've got one that's painted, but it's Lowndes County Sheriff's Department. They got a black rollback wrecker. And two weeks after Ryan Taylor came up missing, nobody, and he's still missing over in Lowndes County. And that's been over two years. They hadn't found his body or his car. But eyewitnesses, and I know they are, will testify, take a polygraph. And anything else they need to do, they eyeballed Ryan Taylor's car on the back of, of a rollback, just like that, and had the burnt car on two weeks after Ryan Taylor was missing. So I'm, well, uh, I'm curious where they took the burned out car. Did they take it wherever they took Ryan Taylor's car? That's my question. But there's no doubt about it. The person that saw it knew Ryan Taylor and knew what he dry, drove and knows exactly what, uh, almost what, what house it was coming, what street they was coming out of. Cause they had to pull over to, for the, th for the record to get out and immediately recognized that as Ryan's car. So, uh, little food for thought folks, there's something rotten in Lowndes County and we know it and we're just waiting to try to put some of these things together. I hope that they can take the manpower they've got on that sting unit, setting up these bogus roadblocks and where they planted crap on people, these jack-in-the-box bull crap, knocking people's heads off, and just trying to get by. They didn't even see it coming. And they, all the resources on that. Why don't you pull all that back, Eddie, and get out here and find out who was murdered in that car and burned down. Some of these other deaths that hadn't been solved, these other missing people that hadn't been solved, you know, as far as we know, or for all we know, there's an axe murderer or a serial killer on the loose down there. And and we got a sting unit that's worried about him and somebody up in some stage roadblock where they have created a crime. And that is the conundrum, folks, is the law enforcement can solve crimes all day long when they create them. You give them something organic that they didn't create, We'll never get the answer. We'll never get the answer. And if it did create it and it wasn't supposed to be an answer, there won't ever be an answer. And they'll see to that. So if anybody has any information about the person that burned up in that car, then I suggest that you, you can call Crime Stoppers. If you don't want to call them, honey, you call me. My contact information is in the description. I promise you, we'll get that word out. You won't have to worry about that being suppressed. Anybody knowing and can add anything to the disappearance and murder of Ryan Taylor over two years ago in Lowndes County. And there are, there's people that have not uh, come forward. For, they're either scared or whatever it is. And you don't have to give your name. But if you've got useful information that can help the family bring a little closure it, where his body could be and the vehicle or anything related to that, then let us know. You can let me know and I can assure you, I'll let the family know and, and they know what to do with it. And anything that you can add to these rapes and sexual assaults by Eddie Scott in Clay County and his drug dealings or anything else he's doing. And he's doing a lot of things, folks under the table they're illegal you know it and i know it let me hear from you we're going to expose them until next time god bless you